Hello friends, this video on DNF block elements part 22 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now let's talk about the magnetic properties. So magnetic property we know is mostly because of unpaired electrons in this atom. So this atom has a lot of electrons and sometimes you have unpaired electrons. We'll see the scenarios and that create this magnetic property and this magnet is used in speakers mostly. And if you see uh, the type of magnet, we have paramagnetic, dimagnetic, ferromagnetic, antiferromagnetic, ferrimagnetic. But we will be discussing more about the paramagnetic and dimagnetic. So in uh, dimagnetic, it is repelled by applied electric field. And paramagnetic is attracted by applied electric field. This paramagnetic is actually uh, attracted by applied electric field and dimagnetic is repelled by applied electric field okay so in paramagnetic uh, in dimagnetic actually all electrons are paired all electrons paired okay and in paramagnetic we have unpaired electrons since we have unpaired electron, they attract or they are attracted towards the electric field. In dimagnetic, all the electrons are paired, so they are not attracted towards the electric field. In fact, they are repelled by the electric field. Okay. And in fact, there is something called ferromagnetic. Also, ferromagnetic is nothing but glorified version of paramagnetic. Glorified version of paramagnetic. We are they are very strongly attracted by the magnetic field and uh, they have permanent magnetic moments. So, in fact, ferromagnetism is, I will say, extreme case of paramagnetism. So, we will not discuss that. In fact, the many of the transition metals are paramagnetic. Many of the transition metals are paramagnetic. Why? Because of the presence of unpaired electron. Okay. So, we will see this paramagnetic. So, they told paramagnetism is nothing but due to unpaired electron and they are attracted for example if you see this particular element is being attracted by the magnetic field right so they are attracted by electric field and as i told transition metals has most of the transition metals has unpaired electron and thus most of the transition metals are paramagnetic Most TM, TM is transition metals, they are paramagnetic, right? Now, each unpaired electron has a magnetic moment. I'll tell you what is paramagnetic. For example, let's take uh, manganese. The electronic configuration is 3D5, 4S2. So, if we draw the structure, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, S, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 in D, and 2 in S. So, if you see this is paired, this is unpaired. There are 5 unpaired electrons. Talk about titanium. 3D2, 4S2. Two. 4S has 2 electrons. This D has 5. Sorry, D has 2 also. So, this has 2 unpaired electrons. Okay, if you talk about this, suppose uh, we'll talk about nickel. Nickel is 3D8, 4S2. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, right, and S has 2 electrons. So, if you see there are 2 unpaired electrons here, there are 2 unpaired electrons, there are 5 unpaired electrons. So, you will see most of the transition metals has unpaired electrons and thus they are paramagnetic. Now, each of these unpaired electrons, each of these electrons has magnetic moment associated with its spin angular momentum also and orbital angular momentum because these actually electrons they spin like this and they move also like this. So both the spin and the angular uh, momentum that is spin angular momentum and the orbital angular momentum both these actually has um, magnetic moment okay. So magnetic moment due to the orbital angular momentum is not much due to the movement is not much but it is mostly due to the spin. I am talking about the first series now. 
the first series scandium titanium vanadium chromium till zinc i'm talking about the first series so first series my magnetic moment due to orbital angular momentum is not much you can ignore that right so we'll talk about only the magnetic uh, moment due to spin angular momentum so you just think of a ball when you throw a ball when you spin it the ball revolves and it moves also same thing this electron they revolve also here like this and they also move just like earth earth has spin also and it actually rotates also it rotates and revolves similar to that we have um, the electron also rotates and revolves okay so the orbital momentum is almost negligible but yeah the spin momentum has values and actually if you want you can find the value of the magnetic moment by formula mu is equal to n into n plus 2 okay when n is the number of electrons and this unit is bm that is bohr magneton right this is magnetic moment due to spin of unpaired electron this mu is magnetic moment due to spin angular moment okay as a told diamagnetic substance the one which doesn't have any unpaired electron zinc is one example of transition metal which has no unpaired electron if you see the electronic configuration of zinc 3d10 4s2 so draw this 1 2 3 4 5 One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and two. See, it doesn't have any unpaired electron, so zinc is diamagnetic. Ferromagnetism is a strong form of paramagnetism, and iron actually shows ferromagnetism. We'll not discuss much into this. now we'll see some of the magnetic properties if you see single unpaired electron mu is equal to root of n into n plus 2 you'll put the values here 1 into 1 plus 2 that is root of 3 that is 1.732 bohr magneton so single unpaired electron produce a magnetic moment of 1.73 bohr magneton okay So if you increase the number of unpaired electron, the mu also increases. So mu is directly proportional to unpaired electrons. Okay. So actually, the observed magnetic moment that you can actually observe this gives a useful data about the number of unpaired electron. For example, you see the calculated value, observed value are all matching for most of these. Okay. So it gives a fair idea of how the electron is how many how the atom is how many unpaired electron it has okay and if you see here also we have a trend it increased from left to right if you go from scandium titanium vanadium chromium magnesium iron cobalt nickel copper zinc so it increases right and then decreases if you see the calculated value also it increases maximum here and then again decreases why because If we talk about the number of unpaired electron we have seen that it increases and then it decreases we have seen that right same thing so since the magnetic moment is dependent on the unpaired electron the unpaired electron increases and then decreases in a given series so the magnetic moment also increases and then decreases in a given series okay let's see some of the important Uh, compound for example fe3 plus and fe2 plus and both are paramagnetic but fe2 3 plus if you see the uh, what do you call electronic configuration fe3 plus will be 3d5 4s0 fe2 plus will be 3d6 4s0 so this has four unpaired electron this has five unpaired electron how you can see Okay, three D five in Fe three plus it has five unpaired electron. Talk about Fe two plus three D six one two three four five and six. 
it has four unpaired electrons. Okay, so the number of unpaired electrons actually uh, is more in Fe three plus. So Fe three plus is more paramagnetic than Fe two plus. Similarly, if we talk about Cu two plus, Cu two plus is actually paramagnetic. Cu two plus, if you see the electronic configuration, it is three d nine four s zero. So it has four unpaired electron. But if we talk about Cu plus, this is three d ten four s zero, and this is diamagnetic. Cu plus is diamagnetic, but Cu two plus is paramagnetic. Okay, so it is not only that always copper will be paramagnetic or iron will be copper magnetic. So this is again you for a given ion you have to find the electronic configuration, find number of unpaired electron, and then you can actually make out or confirm whether it is a paramagnetic or diamagnetic. We'll take some numerical now. The first question is to calculate the magnetic moment of a divalent ion that is. Some iron in the aqueous solution if the atomic number is twenty three. So atomic number is twenty three. So for this it will be or atomic number is twenty five. So for m plus that m two plus it will be twenty three. Subtract two. Okay. So let's write the electronic configuration for 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 this for twenty three number. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 3d5, 4s0. Okay. First, write the electronic configuration of m first. This 25. So 25 is 2, 4, 6, 10, 12, 18, and this 2, 20, 25. This is the electronic configuration of m 25. Okay, three D five, four S two. That is my manganese. So we talk about of M two plus now. It will be one S two, two S two, two P six, three S two, three P six, three D five, four S zero. The electrons are taken uh, plugged from the four S orbitals. Okay, this is the electronic configuration. So let's find the number of uh, unpaired electron. Three D five, five, one, two, three, four, five, right? So this has five unpaired electron. Since it has five unpaired electron, the magnetic moment is root of n into n plus two. Put the value as five. That is root of five into five plus two. That is five into seven root thirty five. The value is five point nine two Bohr magneton. Okay. So please first find the electronic configuration of a given metal, and then find the electronic configuration of the given metal ion, and make sure that you pluck electrons from the s orbital, the outermost s orbital. Calculate the spin only magnetic moment for m two plus, where z is equal to twenty seven. Again, z is equal to twenty seven. We can actually write as argon. Argon will take care of eighteen. Then my four s two twenty. Rest will be in three d, three d seven. This will be the electronic configuration of Z twenty seven. Now we'll talk about M two plus ions. So the electronic configuration will be three d seven, four s zero because the two electrons will be plucked from four s zero four s orbital. So let's find the unpaired electron in this three d orbital, three d seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So number of unpaired electron, unpaired, unpaired electron is one, two, three here. Three. So mu is what? Root of n into n plus two. Root put the value of n is three. Three into three plus two. That is root of three into five, fifteen, and that is nothing but almost four magneton. Less than four, three point. Nine almost. This is the value. Okay. Thank you. Visit examfear. dot com to watch more videos. Attempt free online tests. Get free study materials. Find tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.